Welcome to the Historic West Side documentary by Rachel Allen, Ashley Hamilton, and Don Lightnesser. Today, um, we're going to take you on a journey through the Historic West Side in Las Vegas. First, we'll look at what makes the what makes a neighborhood historic. Then, we'll look at a brief history of the neighborhood, like forced segregation. Um, we'll look at other cities like Austin, Texas, which house similar neighborhoods like the Historic West Side. Next, we'll overview the West Side and how it is signified by letter names, which often lead to stigmatization. Finally, we'll look at how the historic West Side is looking at gentrification in the near future. So let's begin by looking at what makes a uh, neighborhood historic. There are at least four characteristics that define a historic neighborhood. The first is that historic neighborhoods or districts have been vetted and are located on the National Registry of Historic Neighborhoods. The second could be that the neighborhood or district has sig historical significance in the growth of this country. The third possibility is that the area has structure, structures which were built before the civil rights movement. Lastly, um, this specific neighborhood holds historical significance and integrity. So first we'll look at why the West Side is historic. They came up a rain. And in this tent, we all we kept, got up under the table we, that was in the house. That was the only dry spot in the house, under the table. <laughs> While the West Side is not on the National Registry of Historic Neighborhoods, it does meet other criteria mentioned. The historic West Side helped build this country to what it is today. African Americans moved to the Las Vegas area beginning in 1905 because the word of mouth, they learned about better paying jobs that were available at the time in the South. When they arrived in Las Vegas, they were told that they were only allowed to reside on the West Side of the train tracks in an old rag town. According to the latest census data collection, there are still 87 residential buildings still standing and occupied in the area. Also, there are two locations within the historic West Side on the National Registry of Historic Places. Lastly, the West Side holds a lot of historical significance for this area. In America, for a neighborhood to be considered historic, it means that it has to be, have been developed before the Civil Rights Movement, in a time when segregated neighborhoods were the norm. During the 1930s, the West Side was not segregated except for the pool and the theater. The workers, both white and non-whites, would go to the same saloons. So today we're going to look at some characteristics of the West Side. First, at the creation of it. Second, how the West Side was forced into segregation. Third, the stigmas of the street names. And lastly, the future of the West Side. So originally, the creation of the West Side was named after McWilliam Town Site, after a Utah pioneer who originally sold lots of, uh, of for a railroad town. After the first burst of residents and the downfall of the railroad location, a downward spiral in the ec economy forced McWilliams to sell the lots in 1905 and rename the area Clark Township. The West Side of Las Vegas then became populated because of the need for workers for the construction of the Hoover Dam and the need for employees in the magnesium plant in Henderson, which was in full force because of the United States was in World War II. By me being a Negro, it, there was plenty of work here, all right. A lot of people here and a lot of people working, but no Negroes. They just were not hiring them down there at the Hoover Dam. And not in any capacity, not to my knowledge. And I think my knowledge is put in third. And so rather The West Side was nicknamed the Black Ghetto. When blacks moved to Las Vegas, the West Side was the only place they were allowed to settle. Banks and mortgages companies refused to provide financial to financial support to build it. In 1927, Las Vegas formed a branch of the NAACP. 1939, race and color bill had been introduced into state legislator. Vagrancy laws came to be. Constables sentenced black men to chain gangs, sweeping roads, and digging sewer lines. In the 1940s, the West Side Improvement Association, white residents sent a letter to the mayor asking the West Side to be segregated. The city ruled against the petition. Between 1931 and 1941, Las Vegas transformed from an integral community to a completely segregated community with most of the whites moving out of the west side. 
door and and uh, got up on the stage and rehearsed. Paul had hung his jacket, his sweater on the, on one of the, stoo the stools there, and they came around the front, and without thinking, he said, "Oh, I left my I left my sweater back there," and he ran in the front door and ran back to the thing and grabbed the sweater out, and the doorman or somebody saw him, and we got the word if they anybody if the platters walked in the front door again, they fired. So you could play and you could make money, yeah, but don't come in the front door. Mm -hmm. There are similar neighborhoods to the historic west side like East Austin, Texas. East Austin, Texas is an area with a similar historical background. The division that persists in East Austin today are rooted in discriminatory housing policies in the past like redlining. African American residents couldn't even get their utilities turned on if they lived somewhere other than the East Austin. East Austin. East Avenue in 1962 became a de facto boundary that isolated Austin's African-American residents to the east, similar to the railroad tracks in Las Vegas. Their concern today is the gentrification that threatens to dissolve historically black communities. There are also stigmas of the street names. There is a stigma behind numbers and letter streets. On average, property values are higher for homes on street names as opposed to number streets. They also have a reputation of being more dangerous. A blog for Las Vegas tourists said, stay away from all lettered streets at night, which is why West Las Vegas has renamed many of their streets to honor historic black figures in an effort to destigmatize their streets. Dorothy Dandridge, perhaps best known for being the first African-American actress to be nominated for an Academy Award of Best Actresses. Sharon Grace Kodura, the first African-American female to achieve general rank in the Army. And lastly, Mary Jane McLeod Bethune, educator and civil rights activist who started a private school for African-American students. There are signs that the historic West Side will face gentrification in the near future. As of now, there are um, plenty of reasons as to why. Zukin Gentrification, as defined by Zukin, is the conversion of socially marginal and working class areas of the central city to middle class residential use. Research has demonstrated that designating a property as historical often leads to gentrification. Therefore, they go hand in hand. As a result, residents of the neighborhood have the potential to become displaced when property values increase. Currently, in Historic West Side, we are witnessing a revitalization program aimed at the West Side School. In August, the West Side School completed a phase one of a three-phase renewal project, according to 8 News Now. The school underwent a $12.4 million renovation, which now houses Tech Impact. The next phase will result in more business space in 2017. The final phase will include apartment houses and landscaping. In addition, the 100 plan project, working in conjunction with UNLV's Downtown Design Center, created another revitalization plan targeting all of the downtown area. According to the Landscape Architecture magazine, the plan proposes eight moves to bring back the neighborhood, including encouraging mixed use infill along its corridors and edges, implementing a complete streets strategy, and reinventing the Moulin Rouge Casino site as an entertainment district. However, current residents of the neighborhood are fearful that this revitalization program will result in displacement. Assistant to the city councilman, Joseph Mitchell, said smart investors, they see the value of what it can be, not what it is. Resident Hannah Brown responds by stating, they'll be bringing their own places, not restoring mine. I'm not saying that what I need, that what I want to see, but I think realistically that the land isn't going to sit empty. So the historic West Side faces a future of gentrification. Today we looked at how it was created, some other neighborhoods just like it, how the city street names have been stigmatized, and how gentrification could be in the near future. Thank you.